Hey there guys, and welcome to another Legends Arceus video. This time we're going to be going over the top 10 hardest Pokemon to obtain in Legends Arceus. I did something similar for Brilliant Diamond and Shining Pearl, and had a good time putting together that list, so I decided to revisit it for this game. There are a lot of new and different ways to capture and in general obtain Pokemon in these games, and some can be pretty darn difficult. You may need to use an item during a certain time of day, or get to a seriously high level. I looked at everything, and while there are less difficult Pokemon to get in these games than usual, I still think the 10 lined up for this video will be satisfactory. So let's go ahead and just hop into it. We've got a lot to talk about. So, we're going to kick off the video today with an interesting entry, being the OG Psychic Pokemon, Abra. So, the thing about Abra being hard to get your hands on isn't the fact that it's hard to find or that there are special conditions to getting it. No, Abra is literally hard to get your hands on. The thing teleports all over the place. You need to sneak up behind it to actually get it to stay in place. And that can be hard, as the smallest misstep and you're spotted. It's not what is traditionally seen as being difficult to get, but for me, it certainly could be at times. Honestly, it feels a little unfair the way Pokemon notice you creeping about. You know how many alphas I had turn around on me when I had little to no noise when approaching them? Sure, what you could do to get around an issue with Abra is throwing a wing ball from a relatively decent distance away. But even then, it can get annoying with spotting you. It's very reminiscent of a battle you participate in later in the game if you unlock the Darkrai request, where it too will bounce around annoyingly with dark teleportation whenever you throw a ball at it. It's important to get Abra for your Pokedex, but I also recognize that the difficulty in capturing it is not at the same level as the rest of this list, which is what places it firmly in the number 10 spot today. Next up on the list, we've got a whole ton of Pokemon all tied for this spot. The ones that are exclusively available inside of time-space distortions. We're talking Pokemon ranging from original forms of Hisuian forms like Sneasel, to Pokemon that have no reason to exist in the past like Porygon. As you guys are aware at this point, the distortions like to show up at their leisure, with no known way of how to trigger them at the time of this video. There are certain Pokemon that are only available by way of these distortions. Like I said, Porygon is one, but others included are Weavile, Magnemite and Magneton, the Bastiodon line, and the Rampardos line. I kind of hate that this is the only way to get some of these Pokemon due to how rare a distortion can be, and the fact that you're not guaranteed to find any of these Pokemon. But even then, they're only the number 9 spot here. They can be super rare and hard to get in their own right, but still you're usually able to find at least one of these exclusive Pokemon per distortion, whether it's the one you're looking for or not. There are definitely more annoying Pokemon to try and find, as you'll see by the end of the video. We've got another group entry here, as I'm gonna go over all the baby Pokemon here in the games. Because I know I've had a bit of a hard time finding them, and their actual rates of appearing aren't high by any means. For instance, Pichu has more than an 8% chance of being found in any possible areas that it can spawn. Elekid, Mime Jr., Magby, Togepi, Cluffa, and Happiny all have these low rates too. So, trying to find them out in the wild can get very tedious when you're constantly needing to leave an area and go back just to see if they've bothered to show up. There are so many of them with such low rates, it's honestly miserable trying to hunt them down. And at times, it almost feels more worth it to wait for an outbreak. And the odds of triggering one are awful. At the very least, with dimensional rifts, you're able to go about doing other things in an area while waiting for them to open up. But with the baby Pokemon, you just need to get heading back to Jubilee Village and coming back over and over again. And it's just so annoying to have to do. I honestly think it's worse than the other two, but quite frankly, the rest of the list is genuinely hard to get as opposed to just literally rare Pokemon.
This next entry is once again two Pokemon, but it makes tons of sense to group them together as they have the same method of being obtained. So there is a request in the game from Professor Laventon, where he asks you to solve the mystery of a Pokemon he saw in the ocean, which he believes is connected to the Sea Legend. Now, if you've played Brilliant Diamond and Shining Pearl, you have an idea of what you have to do to solve this request, as there was a book added into the Canalave Library that spoke of this very legend. It was a great bit of connection between Legends Arceus and the 4th Gen remakes, but for those that didn't pick them up, this mission may as well be impossible. You have to bring a Boizel, Mantike, and Overquill into the Cobalt Coastlands and swim through that gate-looking thing near the Coastlands camp. Then, you'll unlock a doorway somewhere in the mountains, and inside, you've got a Manaphy and a few Fion waiting for you. That's right, they're the entry here, because they can be very hard to get if you have no damn idea how to complete this request. Also, if that wasn't bad enough, getting Overquill is an absolute chore as well. You need to use Barb Barrage 20 times as a strong move in order to evolve Quillfish. And of course you need to infer that from Quillfish's Pokedex requirements. So the fact is, these are incredibly difficult Pokemon to get, and it's the only way you can get them. Sorry for those of you who skipped BDSP, but if you're trying to complete your Pokedex without a guide, you're going to be skipping these Pokemon too. Closing up the first half of this list is going to be the forces of nature. Thunderous, Landorus, Tornadus, and finally, the all-new Enamorous. These four are difficult to get if you don't have the correct tools to handle them. Once you're into the post-game, you'll be tasked with capturing the original three forces, and to do so, you need to find them in three different areas. You're able to locate Landorus on Ramanus Island in the Obsidian Fieldlands after doing some searching, which is easy enough. Though, after that, you've got to head to Alabaster Icelands to find Tornadus, and it's only available during a snowstorm, while Thunderous is floating on water in the Cobalt Coastlands during a thunderstorm. That means you'll need to constantly reset the area through sleeping, or heading back to Jubilife in order to get these Pokémon to spawn. Then, when they do, you have to break their shields three times before they're stunned, and you can actually battle or catch them. It's easier said than done, since they run very far away when you get too close, and you'll effectively need Jet Balls to really have a shot at breaking these shields. They'll constantly attack you with Tornadoes, and usually they're around an Alpha Pokémon that will for sure annoy the hell out of you. As for Enamorous, you then need to get full Pokédex entries for the other three genies, and it's just awful. You have to do the same thing practically for three straight Pokemon, all to have to go and then catch Enamorous the same way you had to do the other three. It's not fun. It's just a chore to go about getting these Mons and actually completing the quest. They're hard, and not in a fun way. To think it gets worse from here when it gets difficult in these games. It really turns things up a notch. So opening up our top 5 is an entry I consider to be about as difficult as the forces of nature, but ultimately quite a bit harder due to the quantity. All 28 unknown are sharing this spot, as you have to search every nook and cranny of the region just to get them. There are little hints in the Pokedex to tell you where every unknown is, but that only helps a little bit. You need to solve every riddle, get to the proper areas that they're alluding to, and then on top of that, find the proper way to catch them. For example, there is an unknown that is attached to the volcano in the Cobalt Coastlands, and you have to use some sort of feather ball to get it, as throwing normal Pokeballs won't work due to how high up the volcano is. It can be straight up miserable at times, pinpointing the exact location of where these unknown are so you can add them into the decks. At the very least, there are some funny locations like the one on Magikarp's eye at the top of the galaxy headquarters, and the one behind your house in Jubilife Village. But the few laugh hunting these unknown can break are far outweighed by the aggravation of cracking the riddles and finding wherever they may be. If you guys think it's harder to deal with the forces of nature, let me know, because I'm open to the argument.
here at number four, we have got Spiritomb, which is sort of like a distant cousin of Unknown in these games. What I mean by that is they both operate in a similar way. You need to find all 28 unknown in the world by way of cracking riddles. While of Spirit Tomb, you just need to find 107 wisps scattered all about. Yep, that's it. Just 107 wisps. So, super easy, right? Well, okay, maybe it's not easy at all. If you don't have a guide, it's going to take you hours to find all the wisps out there in the world. Especially considering there are no hints. You just know that there are 20 in each area with 7 in Jubilife Village. And that's it. It's a fun idea that you need to get all 107 spirits to make up this thing, but god, it's just so much work to put in for a single Pokemon to show up that isn't even a legendary or something game-breaking. It's funny considering Spirit 2 made an appearance on the BDSP list I did about this topic. But it just seems like Spiritomb will probably never truly be an easy Pokemon to capture. But I guess that at least means Game Freak is staying true to its gimmick no matter what. Giratina is taking the third spot on this list. And while it might surprise some of you to have it here, like, have you even played the post game? It might be majorly time consuming to get Spiritomb and Unknown, especially if you're not using a guide, but Giratina is just straight up difficult because of the way you unlock it. You have to beat Volo in the post game and then defeat Giratina twice in a row afterward, and then head to turn back cave where you must tussle with it once more and capture it. That's really the issue here, having to win that slew of difficult battles. You've basically got to beat Cynthia's team, and then, with no automatic healing between battles, take out Giratina in both of its forms. This is majorly difficult for a game that by no means prioritized battling prior to this point in quite such a way. If you're not someone who is putting the grit items to use either, well, your Pokemon will tremble at the might of this challenge. It's kind of just that truly a difficult challenge. I don't have much else to say on Giratina, so let's move on. In our penultimate spot today, this list is officially being invaded by the memes. You know what the single most complicated Pokemon in this game is? Why, it's Cherim. It and Cherubi are only available in three specific trees in the game, and that is it. You can find Cherubi in an outbreak, sure, as I did, but we all know that the odds of outbreaks giving you the exact Pokemon you want or need are incredibly low. So much so that it isn't particularly worth counting. It can truly feel impossible at times to try to get Cherubi to leap from a tree. You have to fly or run over to a specific area, check to see if things are shaking, and then if they're not, you head back to Jubilee Village. And it's just over and over and over with no result, unless you're incredibly lucky. The argument can be made that this damn thing is one of the most miserable Pokemon anyone has ever tried to get their hands on. I feel like continuing the talk about it here would just make me angry and not make for entertaining content. So I'm cutting this entry here. The memes win today, but even they can't touch God. My judgment has been placed, and the hardest Pokemon to get in Legends Arceus, it's Arceus itself. Can you guys blame me for putting it here? Like, come on, you can call it a cop-out, but I call it the only correct answer. You need to capture every single Pokemon in the Hisui region and handle every single mission put in front of you in order to get Arceus to appear before you. You'll end up taking it on in a similar challenge when you handle the Noble Pokemon, and it is by no means an easy go-around. It's a challenge not just to get Arceus to meet with you, but also to beat it. It's definitely a worthwhile reward for all the hard work you put in, but that does not change the fact that there has never been a more difficult set of conditions that must be met before you can capture a certain Pokemon. Arceus today takes the cake as the hardest Pokemon to obtain in its very own game, and I can't see any Pokemon dethroning it in a future release anytime soon. That's gonna do it for our top 10 today. There are more Pokemon that can be a bit difficult to obtain in these games, but I sort of think that this is definitely a solid list from top to bottom with hinting on all these different methods and game mechanics that create a good challenge that most of the time can be rewarding with the Pokemon you get out of it. 
That'll do it for this one though, so thanks for watching, and keep looking out for more Legends Arceus content. Hey hey guys, thank you for enjoying another Mystic Umbreon video. It's exciting times for the Pokemon franchise, and I look forward to the coming months where it just keeps getting better. If you guys are wanting some more bite-sized Mystic Umbreon content, please check out my TikTok, where I upload daily, as well as the Mystic Umbreon Shorts channel. If y'all enjoyed the video and want to see more content like this, be sure to leave a like, subscribe, and hit that notification bell. Be sure to leave a comment too, it really helps us out. I think it's time to wrap this up though. I'm Mystic Umbreon, and I'll see you next time with some more amazing Pokemon content.